They're the quintessential symbol of the British legal system, the wigs worn by British judges and lawyers for the last 300 years or so. But times change. At civil courts, at least, wigs have now been removed from the dress code. Tom Dumont is a barrister. He's happy about wearing the wig less. The reality is, if you're good, your clients will be confident. If you're bad, the fact that they got confidence because you're wearing some horsehair on your head and an ancient gown on your back shouldn't be allowed to cover up for the fact that you're bad, I think. You should stand on your merit, not on your fancy dress. Death. Antiquated Death. costumes and courtroom rituals have been the subject of many a joke. For the likes of Monty Python, too good an opportunity. Trouser. Cheek. End. Call the next death end. But most lawyers here do not think the gown and the wig are a laughing matter. Paul Oakley is proud to be in a profession with such a huge tradition. And he finds the modernization measures appalling. I don't, I don't think it makes me feel more important or more, more special. It's more me showing respect to the traditions of the law in England and Wales which go back, well certainly wigs go back to about 1680 and that's not something which should be pushed aside without giving it considerable thought. He fears that one day the wigs will disappear for good. That would also spell the end of an entire profession, wig making. Edinburgh based Turvey and Company have been in business for almost a hundred years. It takes close to two weeks for Pat Carney to fashion a respectable piece of headgear from silver gray horsetails. The order books here are set to decline, but Pat is confident that the traditional handcraft will not disappear completely. Unlike in England and Wales, in Scottish courts, wigs are still used. They'll keep going if they're wearing the gowns and everything else, well, the wig goes with it. I think to walk into a courtroom with just a suit on, you've not got the same look of authority. Tom Dumont would be happy to ditch his gown and wig for good. He believes the focus should be on the case and the parties, not old customs and traditions. It feels like you've got the, the burden of the past few hundred years sitting on top of your head just when you need to be... Uh as light and as able to move and adjust to the case that unfolds in front of you. The good news for wig makers is that the ban does not apply to the criminal courts. One reason being to prevent judges and lawyers being easily recognized on the street. But those active in the civil courts, at least, can look forward to relatively sweat-free sessions.